After the aftermath of Thomas Tuchel leaving Chelsea, Todd Bowley set his sights on one Graham Potter, the manager of Brighton, and guess what? He got him. This leaves Brighton with Adam Lallana filling in as a player manager. No disrespect intended to Adam Lallana, but I cannot see him being as good a manager as bloody Graham Potter. So today we are going to give our mate Adam Lallana a helping hand. We are going to take over as Brighton's new manager. And by the end of this video, we will have won the Champions League. And we begin our journey with Brighton in the Premier League with just over 33 million. I'm telling you now, there's no way in hell I'm rocking with this formation. It is not a formation you will ever see me using. Brighton, though, do have a pretty decent team. Obviously, they have just lost Neil Mopar, one of their better players and strikers. However, we do have the additions of S2 Pinan and also Billy Gilmore, which is pretty goddamn decent. But let me tell you something straight. This team is getting a makeover in this transfer window. And we started that transfer window by loaning out Tudor Baluta, Moise Saicedo, Jason Steele, Steven Alzate, and Billy Gilmore. Not before bringing in inform English striker Ivan Tony for just over 12 million. And also bringing in Spanish centre-back Daniel Vivian for just over 15 million. Leaving the team looking like this. I know it's a bit of a transformation, isn't it? From the five at the back to it's actually looking like a pretty goddamn decent side. The beauty of this Brighton squad is majority of the players already in this team are actually got high potential as well. Oh, and another thing as well. I also brought back Seema from his loan deal from Stoke City. He's 20 years old, 73 rated. I didn't want him at Stoke. I wanted him in the squad. But the likes of Lamptey, Seema, Sanchez, Modar, McAllister, it, Trossard, they're all bloody good players, man. And I'm actually quite interested to see where we finish at the end of this season because I'm betting it's going to be in a top 10 finish. So we are halfway through the season and we've found ourselves in the top six. And to be fair, I am bloody buzzing with this considering just now I said I can see it's getting a top 10 finish. And I'm buzzing with this considering just now I said I'd be happy with a top 10 finish. But now let's see if we can get Europe. And in this transfer window, the one and only thing that we did do was send out Daniel Vivian out on loan. Even the team looking like this going into the second half of season one. Now, the reason I've sent out Daniel Vivian out on loan is whilst he was in the starting 11, he wasn't getting the game time, which EA really, really need to sort out in next FIFA because it is really annoying when you have somebody in the starting 11 that you put there, but they're not getting game time. But as you can see, there is a lot of improvement that's happened in this team throughout the entire the starting 11 and the subs bench, to be fair. Obviously, taking into account Adam Lallana's like 33 will be depleting an overall, but he's the player manager. We ain't getting rid of him. But I'm really happy with how this team looks so far and hopefully we can keep this form going into the second half of this season and maybe clinch a spot in a European competition for season two. So we have reached the end of this season. Whilst we did get top 10, which I am exceptionally happy with, we finished eighth overall. We didn't get top six, which is quite unfortunate, but for season one, I will definitely take eighth place. Manchester City finished top of the table with 86 points, five points clear of second place. Liverpool on 81 points. They were five points clear of third place. Aston Villa for whatever a reason there up there. Then it's Spurs, Arsenal, United, Chelsea. Then it was ourselves. And the bottom of the pile is Watford. Where I am done putting Watford, Burnley and Norwich into the championship. If EA in this shitty game are going to keep putting them in the Premier League afterwards. United won the FA Cup. United also won the Carabao Cup. Athletic Bilbao won the Conference League. Braga won the Europa League, beating bloody Barcelona to do it. Christ. And PSG won the Champions League. That's wise. To be fair, we've done actually really goddamn well. Trossard, 22 goals, 3 assists, 18 one rated at the end of this season. Ivan Tony went up to 80 rated, bagging himself 15 goals, 2 assists. McAllister, 9 goals, 5 assists. Right, see me. Considering he's 78 rated, 8 bloody hell. He's going 6 overall this season. Christ. But he's only got six goal contributions. Next season, I'm expecting big things from this guy. If in the next two seasons he's got the similar sort of stats, I'll be saying bye bye to him no matter how goddamn good he becomes. We finished season one, top eight in the Premier League with a team that we've inherited and only added a couple of players to. To be fair, the team that we inherited does have some pretty good players and fairness. However, in order to get to that next step, we're going to need a little bit more money injected into this team to bring us to that next level. This season, we begin with just over four. 47 million. But to be fair, the front three, I'm happy with. The midfield trio, I'm actually really happy with. The back four, I really want another centre-back. The goalkeeper, I'm not fussed with at all. But like I've just said, I think we do need another centre-back. Obviously, Don't's going to be 31 this year. He'll be all right for one more year. Then we will have to consider his space. But for now, we do need another stronger centre-back. And we began that transfer window by selling on Shane Duffy for just 
over 4 million. We sold flooring and doing for just over 1.6 million. Not before spending 40.9 million bringing Esri Concer into the team. Leaving the team looking like this. Now there is pretty much no weaknesses throughout the entirety of the starting 11. Now everybody apart from Seema is 80 rated or above. And now don't get me wrong, Seema grew 6 overall last season. So I've got no worries about him growing to 80 rated and above this season. But we have got such a good team. And only the space of two seasons, this is the team that we've created. And I'm so goddamn happy with it already. Maybe this is the season we could possibly clinch top six football. We are halfway through this season so far. And we are eighth in the league. It's slightly disappointing considering where we were this time last season. But there is still a whole half of the season to go yet. So you never know what could happen. And there's only six points between Manchester City and ourselves. So a good run of form could fix everything. And we began that transfer window by sending my mate to air knock out on loan. Not before bringing in my mate Nico Gonzalez for 24 million. Leaving the team looking like this. There is absolutely no weakness in this team. Now Gonzalez is straight into that starting 11. The reason that we sent out that other dude is purely because he wouldn't get game time whilst that guy was in this team. So with that guy out of the team, hopefully this guy can repay my faith in him. We needed some youth injected into this team because quite frankly, there's certain areas of this team which are pretty goddamn old. We need to inject some younger talent into this squad. But quite frankly now, there's no weakness in this team and I'm really hoping in the second half of the season we can find a little bit of form and we can finally get top six football. Well, it wasn't quite top six football, was it? We finished just outside of the top six. We were one point outside of it, man. That is gut-wrenching. As if Everton are in the top six and we aren't. But top of the league was Manchester United with 78 points. Arsenal finished second, one point behind them. Then Liverpool, one point behind them. The Man City were one point behind Liverpool. That was a crazy title race. Everton finished fifth with 70 points. Chelsea on 62. Ourselves on 61. And Wolves on 58. And going down, it was Blackburn Rovers, Brentford and Aston Villa. Nope. Chelsea won the Carabao Cup. Wolfsburg won the Conference League. Nope. And Liverpool won the Champions League. Stats-wise, it's pretty... I, I, I've Tony had a pretty decent season this time. 19 goals, 2 assists, going to 82 rated. Seema, 82 rated, 21 years old. 12 goals, 2 assists. Far better than last season, but still nowhere near what I want. Trossard had a bit of a shock of 14 goal contributions in 42 games. That's not what I really want from my wingers, to be honest. McAllister, 7 goals, 13 assists from the camp. It's actually pretty decent. Pascal Grove got 4 and 2. Pervis Espuninen got 4 goal contributions. Moda actually did do pretty well. 3 goals and 11 assists. Right, one thing I do want to point out, which really annoyed me as well. As soon as I sent him out on loan, he went to 82 rated. I cannot believe the fuckery that is. Our team is constantly improving season by season. And hopefully in season 3, we can finally get ourselves into that top six and we start season three with just over 45 million once again and like i said last season dunk is getting to that age now where he's gonna start decreasing in overall so it is about time we start thinking about bringing in yet another center back because quite frankly speaking where else in this team needs realistic improvement we began this transfer window by selling on joel valman for just over 10 million but we did bring in six foot two center back david hanko for just over 24 million which leaves the team looking like this going into season three of this rebuild and I'm bossing with how this team looks man there's youth there's ability there's talent there's potential there is literally everything that you could possibly want in a starting 11 in this team I have to admit it is getting harder and harder to figure out where I need to buy for each transfer window because I really am so satisfied with how this team looks but one thing's for certain I want top six football this season no ifs or buts this is beginning to annoy me now why can't we do well in the Premier League League, we have the team to do what we need to do we have the team to do what we want to achieve so why we can't achieve it i do not understand i'm telling you boys if we don't have a good second half of this season we are going to finish in a worse position than we did in the past two goddamn seasons we only did one thing in that transfer window and that was bringing in david elba the austrian center back for just 36.1 million and that leaves the team looking like this going into the second half of this season 
season. Now, the reason I bought David Alaburin is very simple. We had a little bit of money left over from the previous transfer window. The weakness was in that centre-back partnership with Conce. I needed somebody on Conce's level. Alaburin is on Conce's level. He's got the experience that the team needs as well to push for that top six too. So, with any luck, this will have worked. And by the end of this season, we will be in the top six. I'm on the verge of giving up. You guys have seen the team that we are rocking with. We are definitely better than eighth place, for God's sake. I mean, if somehow Everton are getting top four and we are only getting eighth, there is something seriously wrong with this game. But as you can see, Manchester City once again won the Premier League. They were three points clear of second place United. Everton, for some reason, a third place. Then it was Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, Liverpool, and then, annoyingly, ourselves. We did, however, get to the FA Cup final, though losing out to Manchester United in the end. They also went on to win the Carabao Cup. FC Utrecht won the Conference League. Wolfsburg won the Europa League. Liverpool won the Super Cup. Wow, United had a good season this time, didn't they? Christ. Right, the there's something amiss here, guys. There is something seriously amiss. I think we're going to have to make some sales because the players that we've got on this team, whether they're overall saved or not, they are not doing well for us. I mean, Abdullah Seema, 84 rated. I'm expecting players of his overall to get about 20 goals a season. He's getting 16 goals, 5 assists. It's not that good. Tony, he should be doing a hell of a lot better. Gonzalez overperformed, in my opinion, from central midfielder role. Got himself 18 goal contributions, almost as much as our striker. It's like Trossard, 10 goals, 11 assists. I mean, maybe we need to give it one more season and then go from there. But right now, we aren't in a good spot. It's annoying because their overalls are there. The ability is there. The potential is there as well. But they're just not doing it on the pitch where we need them to the most in order to progress ourselves from being a top 18 to being in a team that's qualifying for European competitions. I'm just hoping that next season we can figure out what's going on, solve the problem, and then hopefully, finally get into Europe. Season 4 we begin with just over 50 million in the bank. Am I being a little too hesitant in selling any of the players because I feel like realistically speaking this team should be getting a top 6 finish but it just isn't happening. So with us having 50 million pound in the bank I think we definitely need to make a game changing signing. And we began that transfer window by selling on Louis Dunk for just over 16 million. Not before bringing in Staffordshire born Aaron Ramsdale for just over 47 million. Leaving the team looking like this going into season four of this rebuild now this is the last season i'm gonna give our front three a chance before i end up getting a new freaking winger or striker because quite frankly 86 rated trossard 85 rated tony and 85 rated seaman should pull some numbers this season but let's be real guys this team right now should easily finish in the top six hell we should even finish in the top freaking four with this team boys it's about freaking time we started playing well as well freaking crap it has taken us four seasons, but we are finally starting to put the work in. And for that, we are halfway through this season and we are top of the league by four points. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying by the end of this season, that's where we will remain. But for now, I am ridiculously happy with how we're doing. And the only thing we did in that transfer when there was bringing in Brazilian fullback Alex Tellers for 14.8 million for a little bit of squad debt. Leaving the team looking like this. There has been so much improvement over the course of this season. There's only a couple of players now. Actually, there's no players 84 rated or below now. Everybody is either 85 rated or higher, which is absolutely the standard we need to be at if we want to get top four. Saying that, top four, we could even win the freaking league if we carry on how we are. But as long as we get top four football this season, I couldn't care less. While we didn't just get top four, we won the league in doing so. And we didn't just win the league either. We won by a commanding margin of eight points over the bottle jobs themselves. Manchester City. City with third, United with fourth, Chelsea fifth, Newcastle United and Fulham finished sixth and seventh with Liverpool finishing eighth. That's crazy. But the best part about all of this is we have gone from not being able to get top six for God knows how long and we go and win the entire damn thing this season. If that isn't a statement, I don't know what is. And the bottom three this season was Watford, Sheffield United and Leeds. Liverpool won the FA Cup. We won the Carabao Cup as well, getting the double. Borussia Mönchengladbach won the Conference League. Hoffenheim won the Europa League. Wolfsburg won the Super Cup and Atletico Madrid won the Champions League. Well, the stats-wise, guys, it's not that 
much better than last season, but we won the goddamn league this season, so I can't really complain. Trossard gone to 87 overall, getting 34 goal contributions. Actually, no, that's really good. 34 goal contributions in 47 games is actually really goddamn good. Ivan Tony, 85 rated now, 18 goals, 3 assists. Seamit, 17 goals, 7 assists. Gonzalez, once again, getting double figures in the goal tally, getting 10 goals and 7 assists. Alibi, holy shit, I did not see that coming. 8 goals, 8 assists. McAllister, 8 goals and 10 assists from that cam roll and then the rest are pretty bog standard for their position but guys we didn't totally get top four this season we won the whole goddamn thing we won the premier league this season in season four of this rebuild and i could not be happier about that because of everything that we have achieved this season we're going to have a lot more money to work with than 50 million next season which means that we can bolster the squad but i don't really want to because a lot of brighton's core starting 11 are actually in this squad so i feel like i'd be doing a disservice to brighton fans watching this video if i do make any changes however i would feel like an absolute numpty if i didn't take advantage of the funds that we've been given but i'll see what happens next season i told you didn't i this season we begin with just under 140 million to be honest i don't really know where i would like to improve the team a little bit more i think we may need to think about getting a new center back because of Allah. but then again we've got hanko on the sub bench so really that cancels out that idea guys i think i'm gonna have to just bite the bullet and replace some of brighton's core starting 11 to just improve this squad because I will be damned if I waste my opportunity of using 140 million to improve this squad. And we began that transfer window by selling on David Alaba for just over 44 million. We also went on to sell Matoma for 12 million. We then went on to loan out Robert Sanchez and Billy Gilmore. Not before bringing in David De Gea on a free, bringing in Spanish centre midfielder Marcus Lorente for 55 million. And the big one, we brought in Matthias De Ligt for 126.4 million which leaves the team looking like this going into our very first season in the champions league and i think considering last season we won the premier league with a team that was a little bit worse than this we are more than ready for the champions league this season and speaking of the champions league we are in group d joined by dortmund villarreal and trubs on sport now i would argue that we should clear this group quite easily second spot will be between dortmund villarreal and trubs on sport i'll be surprised if they get any higher than fourth while we didn't exactly top group d but we did make it through to the round of 16 nonetheless that honor goes to dortmund who cleared it by two points finishing with three wins two draws and one loss we won two drew three lost one villarreal went on to go into the europa league finishing third with six points and chops on spore that was probably the only thing i got right in that prediction but we are in the round of 16 up against Inter Milan, okay, not quite AC Milan, but Inter Milan, do uh, you know what, Inter Milan will do. And once again, we are taking the Premier League by storm, four points clear at the halfway point in this season, and I'm telling you something guys, we have created a monstrosity of a team in Brighton. And this is how the team looks going into the round of 16 against Inter Milan in the Champions League. Let's be honest right now, this Brighton side, is majority of it is the core Brighton team as well, like most of it is anyways. And it is ridiculous how much they have grown from season one to now seem at 89 rated trossard 89 rated McAllister, 87 rated bloody lamptey 86 rated espuninen 87 rated as well not to mention 85 rated modu mwepu is 83 rated as well this whole rebuild has just been an absolute massive w and hopefully we can just continue to make it better by getting through to the final and here we are round of 16 against inter milan as you've just seen delict has picked up a suspension meaning he won't be in this game however we do have hanko on the subs bench ready to fill his shoes and then some inter milan's team is rocking with that patented 3-1-4-2 martinez gerard up top Komen, that's a good signing baltron polinia barala barardi van houston jimenez for fun that's a good team but let's be honest i would say i was his better 10 times over than theirs we are at home in the first leg and it's nil-nil. That's the first goal as knockout stage game I think I've ever had on these rebuilds. But we go into the second leg of this tie, all tied up. We are back to a full strength start in 11. Brighton team coming up against Inter Milan in the second leg. It is all square going into this game as well. They have replaced Polina with Kante. That, to be fair though, Kante at this point, he's got to be like 34, 35. But with that being said, let's get into this game and see if the boys in light blue can pick up the victory. 3-1 overall 
4-3-1 on the night as well, we proceed to the quarterfinals in very convincing fashion. We go from one footballing giant to the next, and I've never come up against Manchester United so many times in the Champions League as I have done lately, but we are up against them in the quarterfinals, and their team is as follows. Sancho, Colo Muani, who we all know is bloody brilliant on this game Rashford in the 4-3-3 holding formation with Fernandez, Horvat and Martinez in that midfield trio McTominay playing left back for whatever reason Maguire, Indica, Mazraoui and Onana that's a very good team to be fair the last time we played against United I don't think they had a very good defensive lineup however that defensive lineup on the right side is pretty decent but on the left side they've got McTominay and Maguire now McTominay as of late for United hasn't been playing too bad but we all know what Maguire's been like so let's get into this game and see if we can get an advantage on the Red Devils. We can't, but we did take an early lead with Ivan turning in the 23rd minute. Oka 4 in the 71st, game one back. Sancho in the 80th, and then McAllister saving us that freaking game in the 84th minute, leaving it all tied up going into the second leg. We play the second game at Old Trafford. It looks like they've made a couple of changes. We've got Bernard in for Maguire. That's a wise choice, that is, to be fair. And Alanga in for Rashford. McTominay remains a full back in Manchester United starting 11. That's a very weird choice, but I don't care. We're going to get into this game. We're not going to waste any time. And we are going to make it to the semi-finals. 5-4 overall. 3-2 on the night. And we have somehow got past the Red Devils. And we are into the semi-finals. Boys, look who we're up against. The bottle jobs themselves. Tottenham Hotspur. I actually don't think we've come up against Spurs at any point in our rebuilds, whether it be the Champions League finals, semi-finals, quarter-finals, round 16. I think we've only come up against them in the group stage, but that doesn't really count because, well, we simulate it, don't we? But we are up against Spurs in the semi-finals. The one stage before the final, and we get to beat Spurs before we get there. And they are rocking with the 5-2-3 Sun, Kane, and Jesus up top. Jesus is an interesting one. Don't think he'd actually go there now after moving to Arsenal. But anyways, Nunes and Soros, their midfield duo with Rahulion, Skriniar, Shula, Rodon, Emerson, Royale as their back five with Silva in goal. Now, quite frankly speaking, I would argue our team is far better than that. Kane and Son have to be getting on at this point. Jesus will be by a mile their best player, along with maybe Rahulion and Shula or Skriniar. But our team is very goddamn well-rounded. There's only a couple of standout players, realistically speaking, when you take a look at it. So without further ado, we're at Farmer Stadium. We're going to get into this game and see what... Oh, don't you dare do this to me, Brian. Don't you dare. Boys, I swear on my life, I will lose my shit if we get knocked out by Spurs. I don't care whether it's the Champions League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, Premier League, whatever. We cannot lose to Spurs at any point in this game. So without further ado, let's get into this game and hopefully... Come on! There it is! That is what I want to see. Spears, up yours. We smash you out of the Champions League. And on the 30th of May 2026, it will be Brighton versus Manchester City in the Champions League final. Now, I don't know how we've done in the league. I know that they've beaten us and we've beaten them sometimes this season. But this has got the makers to be a very competitive final. And as of lately, the finals have actually been pretty goddamn difficult. I don't know what's happened. But I think I've changed myself when I said I wanted to be a little more challenging. I didn't mean this challenging. But nevertheless, before we get into the final, let's see how we've done elsewhere this season. While we didn't win the Premier League this time, guys, that honour goes to Liverpool. They finished 9 points clear of Man City. They finished 10 points clear of us. Fair play to them, guys. Fair play to them. Newcastle United finished fourth. United finished fifth. Everton finished sixth. Chelsea finished seventh. And Spurs, the bottle drops themselves, finished eighth. Where the hell are oh, they? There they are. Back where they belong, not on the screen. And West Ham, Southampton and Norwich bit the bullet this time and got themselves relegated. City won the FA Cup. Brentford beat the bottle jobs to win the Carabao Cup. And you guys wonder why I call them the bottle jobs. FC Utrecht won the Conference League. Madrid won the Europa League. And it was Atletico Madrid this time to win the Super Cup. Ivan Tony take. Okay, bow lad, 56 games played, 40 goals, 5 assists, 45 goal contributions, 56 games is absolutely no joke. Holy shit, what a season I've been turning here. Abdullah Seema finally started playing like he should be. 22 goals, 9 assists. McAllister, 27 goal contributions from the camera. That's decent. Trossard with 14 goals, 9 assists. I'm so happy I managed to get Trossard to one final at least. Nico Gonzalez, my mate from Spain, 5 goals, 7 assists. Marcos Llorente, don't you dare tell me he's suspended. Don't tell me he's suspended, for God's sake. Marcus Llorente actually is suspended. The absolute tip brain. What is he playing at? But 
I mean, to be fair, we do have Moody on the bench, so in hindsight, it is quite fitting. We do have one of Brighton's starting 11 core players that we started this rebuild with back in season one, so to be fair, it is kind of fitting. Manchester City's team is rocking with the false nine, as always, with Di Catalera, Foden, Asensio is there from three. If I've got that Belgian name on, by the way, I do apologise. I cannot pronounce that name, save my life. Graven Birch, Pe oh my god, that is a scumbag midfield trio. Graven Birch, Pedri, Rodri. Oh my god. And then you got Cancelo, Kempembe, Diaz, Frimpong, and Eris. That is a cracking team, man. Boys, we are in for a rough, rough game. The only thing I would actually argue doesn't make sense is the Belgian striker being on the wing, not as a striker, because, well, he's like six foot four. He's like a freight train running at you. You'd want him up top, not on the wing, but hey, that's not my problem. It is time to get into the game. It is Brighton, Manchester City at the Olympic Stadion in the Champions League final. From Graham Potter leaving Brighton for Chelsea to Adam Lallana becoming the playing manager to ourselves taking over Brighton in season five, we are in the Champions League final. Now all we have to do is win it. Let's go, boys. Come on. And speaking of, we see Ivan Tony. Oh, my God, Edison. What a save. Jesus. By the way, I'm trying this new camera angle. I actually, oh, my God. They've made them. Oh my god, I was going to say, how the hell did we miss that? But Edison, for whatever reason, made a massive fuck up there. We take full advantage due to an Ivan Tony on the ball awareness. And we are 1-0 up inside 10 minutes. Boys, what the hell happened there? What was he thinking doing that? I mean, Ivan Tony almost messed it up, like, missing the original shot, right? But... It is what it is, and we're 1-0 up. As I was saying, guys, I'm trying out a new camera angle, and I'm going to bring this into FIFA 23, so let me know what you guys think of this. Should I rock with this, or should I keep the normal one? I actually prefer this one, personally. It feels a bit more like it's televised. Oh, no. Graven Birch is on the ball. He's on the ball, and we all know what Graven Birch is capable of. 
Oh, shite. Oh, oh wait, what? Ah! <laughs> All that for nothing. You're offside, lad. Nico Gonzalez is on the ball. We find McAllister in the middle. Can we get another goal? Oh, my God. Just like that. We're 2-0 up. 25 minutes in. McAllister with a beautiful left-footy finesse shot. Goes straight past Edison. Doesn't stand a chance. And we go 2-0 up inside the half-hour mark. Just after conceding an offside goal from Manchester City, we go up the other end and show them how to properly score. Look at this for a camera angle. Look at that. Edison, actually, he should be doing better than that, but it's a good goal nonetheless. That's a great block. Oh, my God. Seema. Oh, we know what we all know about Seema's pace. Oh, what a ball that is. Please tell me that's on side. Ivan Tony's all alone. He's going to go for it. And he's made... He's made it 3-0 in 35 minutes. Manchester City are a steaming pile of mediocrity at the moment. And it's safe to say we've had a first half to remember. And Ivan Tony's just phased through that billboard like it's nothing. Mowed it. Oh, we are relentless, guys. Look at this. We're on for another... I'll tell you what, we can make it for you. We can get Ivan Tony a... Oh, we tried to be cheeky and it just didn't work. See, the thing is, though, as mad as this sounds, all Man City need... Is one goal and they're straight back in this game. So if we can get one more goal, it will kill the game dead. Oh shit. Okay, this is what I mean, guys. This is a oh my What a save! Holy shit! Let's not make it oh come on, Aaron Ramsdale is just unstoppable at the minute. Jesus, what a save. What a couple of saves he's done. Jesus, he's hands down just saved the game from going from 3-0 to 3-1 down just like that. And that is off time. And we somehow go into the off time break 3-0 up. I have to say, I think Bayern Ramsdale last season was a stroke of absolute genius because ever since we have Ramsdale in goal, we've done absolutely incredible. A Premier League title to our name, top three. Carabao Cup as well, and maybe after this game, a Champions League all in the space of, what, two seasons of having Ramsdale in goal? Tariq Lamptey is on the right-hand side of this pitch. He's got acres of room to run into. We're going to go Gonzalez. We're going to go Ivan Tony. We're going to go to the bar. Oh, you little... Look at their press. Holy shit, I tell you what, we're going to go long. Seema, I see you. I see you, Seema. What? Oh, my God. And it's like... What? Oh, here we go. It's Ivan Tony's hat trick. Oh. Really? That deserved a goal, man. That deserved it. I mean, we went from being pressed on our own end, one second, to the other end in like, what, three seconds of football. One long ball through pass, and that's all it took to undo Manchester City's defence. Oh, that's a great ball. That's a great ball. That's an even better save, though. Aaron Ramsdale. I'm so proud of you, Ramsdale. You are a Stokey through and through. Right, we could go 4-0 up here. Okay. Maybe we can get Aaron Tony's at trip. How long did you have to wind up to take that shot, Tony? McAllister on the corner. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful ball. Ivan Tony's in the box and it goes straight to Edison, man. I tell you what, guys. If Ivan Tony on a level does not get into the England squad for this World Cup, it is a crime. Oh, speaking of... Oh, my God. Aaron Ramsdale. And that's another guy who needs to go to the World Cup. Aaron Ramsdale's an incredible. Let's in. Let's found Trossard. Trossard. We're going to take on Frimpong. We've taken Fringpong out, and we're going to go find Simi. What a ball. We're going to go, yeah, we're going to do it just like that. We have got Tony Zattrick in the scummiest way possible. Imagine if we'd have missed that then. I think it's Tony Zattrick anyway, I'm not sure, but what a ball from Trossard. The weight of that ball was perfect. We go to Ivan Tony in acres of room. We kill the game dead. Manchester City are officially dead on the ground. And Brighton are officially, well, unofficially, officially, champions of Europe. Oh, no. Let's end it on a clean sheet, for God's sake. For God's sake. We couldn't have got a clean sheet, could we? I mean, that's about as typical of a goal that we'd concede as anything else, to be honest. That's exactly how we normally concede anyway. But it is what it is. They've still got to score, like, what, four in how long? Like, five seconds? So... I'm pretty sure that we're all right. And there we have it, boys. We have officially completed the objective of this video. We have made Brighton the best team in the world in emphatic fashion, beating Manchester City 
4-1 in the Champions League final, courtesy of an Ivan Tony hat-trick and a McAllister goal from outside of the box. So what a banger of a goal that was as well. Thank you so much for the support you guys have been showing me over the past like month or so. It's been absolutely mind-blowing. This is the reason I'm bringing you guys these rebuilds, because you freaking deserve them. But with that being said, that is the end of this video. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, smash the hell out of that subscribe button, turn that notification bell, and see you never miss a video I upload. We are on the road right now to 6,000 subscribers, and the like goal for today's video is 250. If we could hit that, that would be incredible. That's all from me, guys. It's been your boy, Gordon. Hope you guys have an amazing afternoon, and until next time, I'll see you later.